<sighs> this feels like one of my first uh, videos here on uh, YouTube. Just, I guess, a little, a little nervous. I guess maybe it's excitement, but uh, right off the top, I want to introduce Pro Light Mods, something that can take your plain old, boring, normal soft boxes and turn them into this a functional set piece that will instantly raise the dramatic impact of your images. For a fraction of the price, you can add what appear to be Hollywood light boxes or stadium lights to your setups using both strobe for photography and constant light for photography and video, just like what you see here. Um, we'll have five sizes at launch, these two by three footers, a square three by three foot model, a larger three by four footer, and two strips, a one by three and one by four foot size that can all be mixed and matched to create endless backdrop combinations. And that allows you to exercise your own creativity to further separate yourself from your competition. And this doesn't even include the super enhanced on-set experience you'll create for your subjects who will be frankly amazed by the instantaneous results right out of your camera. Uh, no need for stale Photoshop templates that are applied after the fact when you can wow your clients right after you click the shutter. Now, I've photographed everyone from pro athletes to dance teams to law enforcement officers with these types of lights. And even though they've all been photographed hundreds, if not thousands of times, without fail, they are all impressed when that image pops up. And I'm excited to say that these are all available right now for pre-sale over on ProLightMods.com. You can kind of see on my fancy little shirt here. So if you want to hang around, we'll get into how this idea came about, talk about the mods themselves, as well as other details like pricing and when they'll hopefully be shipping. But you know what we have to do first? <laughs> This time I'm kidding, so no, no need to fast forward since we'll just get right into it. But let me slide in what started this idea to demonstrate you know, where all this came from and what needed to be improved. Let's see if I can move this beast into place. How's that look? I think that's good enough. Okay, so this is the backdrop that I put together about a year and a half ago after consulting with my good buddy John Grass. And I took his idea and you know, made a, a little, uh, some improvements to it and made it a little more permanent with a thicker size board than he used initially. And then I added some diffusion material to the backside. If you haven't seen it, I'll uh, link the video about this backdrop uh, up here. Now, you know, this backdrop, it, it gives the look of those illuminated um, Pavo tubes, and <laughs> it's still getting me tagged on Instagram to this day. And my hats are off to all of you who undertook uh, this project to make yourself a setup like this, because I know it can be a lot of work, but you know the results can be pretty dang awesome. And those results are straight out of camera, you know, with minimal, if any, retouching needed. And I mean, you could probably slap a preset on there in Lightroom and be totally done. And you know, all of that is great, but I think the most important thing that I took from using this backdrop is the reaction I got from pretty much everyone who took their picture with it. They are just completely shocked and amazed by the results they see. I mean, without, without any lighting behind this, it's a fairly unassuming looking setup and I get some weird looks when I ask people to stand in front of it, um, but it shocks everyone. Uh, I mean, I had a NBA shoot a couple months ago where we used a custom design backdrop like this, which I'll link up here in the video. And even players like LaMelo Ball, who's been photographed, what, a thousand times? Uh, he was surprised, and in a good way, when he saw the images pop up on my computer. Uh, and then as, the, was the, as were the rest of his team, and the resulting images from that shoot are actually currently installed on a wall you know, inside the arena. Okay, so why am I showing all this? 
Well, I wanted to take all that good stuff and produce something that I could travel with and easily use on my photo shoots. And this guy here just, it isn't possible with that. Uh, first of all, it's huge and unwieldy. Uh, you'll need a truck to transport it and then it'll get all dinged up and you know, pretty soon you're back to square one. So I started thinking, you know, what could I create to get the same effect, if not better, in a smaller, more mobile package? Now, I'm a pacer and I'll walk around in here in my studio when I'm trying to get my thoughts together about things and <laughs> I was doing just that with this issue. And on my wall, I've got some pictures that I've made through the years. And one of those pictures was with the Atlanta Falcons. And it was taken with one of their players in front of two light banks. Uh, they had a smoke machine blowing across the lights and were filming the pregame hype video. But I was able to slide in there and take some shots from their setup to create the image that I'll you know, put up on the screen here. So with that being said and shown, I think it's probably a good time to get this guy out of here. And show you just how unwieldy it is. I've moved that thing a lot, so I'm, I've got some good practice. Oh, but, you know, after I saw that image and the idea hit me that maybe I could create a template of sorts, place it over a softbox, and get that same effect for a fraction of the cost. Uh, now, you know, those real light banks are thousands of dollars, and each light is an actual light. So with my idea, I was hoping to create the illusion of multiple lights, but by using only one. And, and, and since I had just used <laughs> foam board for the old backdrop, that's exact, instantly where my mind went initially. And I ran off to the craft store and mocked out some really rough prototypes, like this guy right here, to see if it would work. Uh, I even put on, I've got some old football helmets back here, and I put one of those on and did some remote images with, you know, or self timer shots. And to my surprise, it worked. Um, that being said, this you know, product right here left a lot to be desired, um, but it did succeed in creating the effect. So let me skip ahead some and I'll just say, you know, I, I quickly realized that using this foam core was not gonna be a long-term solution since it doesn't really seal along the edges of the inside of the box with the narrow Velcro I've got on here. And once you put it in and pull it out a few times, it, it just really starts to fall apart. So then I realized that maybe fabric would be the solution. And I had some additional prototypes made using a fabric with, let me get it set here, with Velcro sewn to the edges. Now, this worked pretty well, but the design just it wasn't the best. Um, and this is the thickest fabric that I could really source for this type of use, but it wrinkles too easily. And I came to realize that these sealed corners were hard to manage. And on top of that, the actual measurements for the mod needed to be slightly smaller than the box to help you know, maintain the integrity of these circles like you see back here. And that's really key for this overall effect. So uh, we made another prototype with open corners, uh, but that wasn't the answer either. So, and, and that actually brings me to another thing I discovered while making these mod prototypes. And that is the fact that just because a softbox is labeled a certain dimension, it doesn't mean that it actually is that dimension. I mean, you could probably get a tape measure out at, at your place there and check your soft boxes. And I'm pretty confident you'll find they're smaller than advertised. And that fact actually cost me another round of prototypes. Anyway, open corners weren't the answer. And what I came up with is an adjustable corner that will help adapt these mods to most of the soft boxes they're sized to fit, despite these dis discrepancies with measurements. And that being said, I've been ordering in different boxes to my studio. I've got them all over the place in here, probably well over $1,000 worth at this point, just to try different brands and sizes. And I'll put a list of, a, of approved soft boxes up on the website as I find them. Um, the good thing is these will work with just about any brand box. 
even the really inexpensive ones like these right here. I think this is an impact and this is a uh, Godox. Uh, and they all come with that layer of diffusion that works perfectly with the mods to create the effect that we want. Uh, so at the end of the day, you can put these on any strobe if you have the correct size box and the mounting ring for your strobe, brand strobe. So after all these prototypes, let's talk about the final version of the mod itself. And this is the one by three version. But overall, it is a sealed, opaque fabric, meaning that the light from the strobe will not pass through it. It's heavy enough to be wrinkle resistant, but not too heavy to have sag or pull on the softbox. And I settled on a inch and a half border of Velcro uh, to walk that balance of being manageable when installing it and then pulling them off of the box and at the same time giving them enough length to or width uh, to help light proof the edge of this side with the inside of the softbox. Um, the holes in this specialized fabric are laser cut so there isn't any fraying on the edge and that's very important to keep that integrity of the circles all the while maintaining it for unlimited uses. I want these things to last for y'all. Oh, and to keep them portable, they'll actually roll up and Velcro close in a nice little roll that then can be stuffed in your bag. Here, I'll show you real quick. So you just start it on one end and roll it up. And you get something neat like this. And here's another size right here that I've got rolled up. So the goal was to create something portable durable and not that expensive and I feel like we've we've done that for the most part speaking of expensive or maybe I should probably say pricing um, I'm doing everything I can to keep these as affordable as possible and still produce though produce them myself so I'm funding this launch all by my lonesome here which is you know, probably, probably the reason I'm so nervous I didn't team up with another company or manufacturer that would you know, want to put their name on them and you know, mark them up. I also didn't go the Kickstarter or crowdfunding route where you have to account for another percentage of cost to put together marketing and a campaign and, stuff and all that kind of stuff for that. Uh, instead, I'm using a grassroots style of marketing um, with these mods, and that means you know, I'm right here with you on YouTube and my social media. Uh, so I'm also hopeful uh, that eventual word of mouth will, will help with these uh, as well. Uh, and then I'm also I'm ordering what I can as far as minimums um, are concerned with these models in order to you know, get that price break from the manufacturer. Uh, that means I have to order more than I'd like, but it doesn't mean that I've got a lot of inventory if they turn out to be popular, which is what I'm hoping happens. Uh, another aspect to take into account with, with that and is the world supply chain you know, problems these days. And with that being said, I'm going to have to, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to air freight these in so they won't be stuck out on a container ship somewhere for months on end. And that's obviously more expensive, but it'll get them here sooner and we can all start conducting some epic photo shoots. Uh, so with all that being said, and then with the legal uh, expense of getting these patented and protected, uh, and then marketing and doing everything else I've been doing on the side, I'm going to be starting the pricing with the 1x3 model at 89 bucks, and the largest uh, is the 3x4 model, and it'll be priced at 119 So all the other ones will be within those two um, price points. Um, I'm also offering a 10% discount code for those people over on my Patreon. So if you're interested, you can join, you know, save some money and actually get more content uh, all at the same time. Um, let me st also state, again, with the supply chain issues, you know, holding things up, uh, these are currently open for pre-sale and I'm hoping conservatively that they'll be shipping in February. Could be sooner, but I'd rather ship earlier than a set date than later. Um, but of course, I can't make a guarantee with everything that's you know, going on in the world currently. Uh, what I can say is that they will be first come, first serve. So they'll ship in the order that they're purchased. 
And you know, with the pre-sale, I'm hoping that will also allow me to adjust my orders if more people you know, want them than I've already ordered. Uh, but to be clear, I'm not waiting on orders. These are already ordered in quantity to try and hit that February date. But the pre-sale could help me adjust those numbers if needed and help me stay on top of future inventory. Whew. Well, I know this video has gone long, so you know, I'll put out another one soon showing exactly how these install on the boxes, like these back here. And I can show some behind the scenes from a shoot with the uh, NHL uh, Carolina Hurricanes, where we use some of my prototypes with the guys. And let me, I'll show you real quick too. So this is the prototype version of this model right here. And for that shoot, I actually used it uh, at, for a light that shined on the player because uh, what I wanted was the reflection of this in their visor. So on the, the NHL players' helmets, they've got that clear plastic visor. Normally, I'll be using like a beauty dish, but re reflecting in that visor is just a big round circle. And so switching out that light and then placing this mod in that light, I was able to create something that looked like an arena light that reflected in their visor. So there's more to these than just using them on camera. You can use them for reflective surfaces on like football helmets or you know any other types of gear that you can actually see the types of uh, lights that are being used on set. And that brings a, another uh, dimension of realism uh, that you can kind of uh, add to your photo shoots. So I think I'm gonna leave it there for now. And, uh, you know, like as I said, I will, uh, if you've got questions or comments, please leave those down below. Um, I will uh, answer them as soon as I'm, I'm able to. Uh, visit the website, ProLight, ProLightMods.com, and check out everything over there. And in the meantime, y'all, uh, stay safe and healthy out there. Uh, if you're digging this video, these mods and stuff, you know, hit that thumbs up for me. That'll help me out tremendously. And more content, as usual, hit that subscribe button and the bell uh, there next to it. Uh, you can find me on social media at ProLightMods uh, on Instagram and Twitter, as well as my usual Quants photo. And I will see y'all soon in the next one. Thank you.